So I was thinking about it today and I realized that I've now been in four different bands that have covered rock and roll by Led Zeppelin. We usually play it at the end of the show just for something fun to jam on. And there have been multiple occasions in different bands where we found ourselves lost in the middle of the song. Because it wasn't a song we took too seriously, so we thought, you know, we'll just go up there and play it. And when it got to the middle, it got to the point where we're looking at each other like, is this where we switch? And I always wondered why that kept happening. And I actually saw a couple bands live too where I noticed that was happening as well. So I thought, okay, I gotta get to the bottom of this and figure out why this is so tricky, even for decent musicians. So I'm not gonna talk about the drum intro because that does come in on a weird count, uh, one that you probably wouldn't expect. And so we're gonna skip that today because I covered that in another video. Today I'm just gonna be talking about the progression and why it's easy to get lost within it if you're not really paying attention the whole time. So the whole song is based off of a blues progression. Uh, if you think about it, we all know the 12 bar blues really well. It's kind of like in our DNA from listening to music our whole lives. So you probably heard something like this. So that's a really common progression, whether you're a musician or just someone who loves listening to music. You've probably heard that a million times. And it's funny because it already sounds like rock and roll by Led Zeppelin, but what they do, Jimmy Page plays a riff like this. Now as a guitar player, I consider that just playing the riff one time through. But what's really happening is there's two measures happening underneath that. So that's why it's already a little bit weird to count this. So if we go through the entire first 12 bars of the song before the first verse, it's going to sound like this. <laughs> That's where the first verse will start. Now it's kind of tricky to actually count the measures as you're playing that riff, but I recommend you give it a shot because you can really keep track of where you're at in the song if you could do that. Now when the first verse starts, Paige goes like this. And the crazy part is they follow a progression, but now it's gonna be a 24 bar progression. So that's kind of crazy to think, 24 bars for the entire thing. Within that entire progression, there's gonna be a verse, and at the very end of it, there, there's what a lot of people consider a chorus, you know, the been a long time, been a long time part. Uh, some people just call the whole thing one big verse, but we'll break it up into the full verse and the little chorus at the end of it. That's gonna be 24 full measures. Now, don't do what I did. I made this mistake and my friend John talked me out of it years ago. But after the lonely, 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 lonely time part, I used to think that was the end of the chorus but it's not over yet. There's still four more measures of A before we're done with that entire chorus. So that makes it really easy because after you do the big clump of 24 measures, you just do it all again for the second verse. Remember, there's no in between. It just goes from one to the next. Now it's after the second chorus where things can get a little bit weird because you have to remember to go back to 12 bars. So you're basically going back to what you did in the beginning of the song. What makes it different though is Robert Plant sings some ooze over the top of it and then Paige throws some licks in. And then he ramps into the solo by coming in a little bit early by going which is a very bizarre part. But when the solo officially starts, it's after the 12 bar round. The solo is going to be another 24 measures. And then after that, we have a whole nother verse and chorus, which is another 24. So these are huge chunks of 24 that you have to keep track of. And then at the very end, they stop early, right after the lonely, lonely time, so that uh, Bonham can do his awesome drum solo. And then the song ends on A. So what is the main culprit when it comes to getting lost within the song? 
I believe it's not remembering to go back to the basic 12 bars after the second verse and chorus. So if you can remember that, I think everybody can be on the same page, uh, pardon the pun, and I think everything can work out for these bands and hopefully for my bands. Now you gotta make sure everybody in the band knows about this because you might know when to switch, but your bass player doesn't and all of a sudden there's the train wreck. So in rehearsal, be sure to go over that concept of, hey, Here's a chunk of 24, don't forget to go back to the 12, and so on. If you could work that out, I can't see you having any more problems, and hopefully I don't either with this song. Okay everyone, so in the comment section, if you ever had issues with this song, let me know. It's really weird because it seems like it should be a really simple song, right? But uh, certain things that seem easy are sometimes surprisingly tricky. Okay everyone, hopefully that was fun to watch, and we'll catch you at the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.